Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. Last week, Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg sadly passed away, opening up a seat on the US Supreme Court. While a vacancy in the nine-member court is always newsworthy, a presidential election less than two months away makes the impending confirmation battle even more important. In this video, we'll discuss the political ramifications of this vacancy, as well as looking back on the career of the late Justice Ginsburg. Before we do though, we're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers, and it looks like TLDR US might beat TLDR EU to the mark. However, that being said, EU has been on a much faster growth trajectory recently, so please do us a favour and subscribe to help the US across the finish line and do yourself a favour by getting all of the latest videos delivered right to you. In 1993, President Bill Clinton nominated then-Judge Ginsburg to fill seat six of the court, following the retirement of Justice Byron White, who had sat on the court for over 30 years. The Senate overwhelmingly voted to confirm Judge Ginsburg to the court, with the final vote tally reading 96 in favour, three opposed, and one not voting. From that day until the 2018 term, Justice Ginsburg did not miss a single day of oral argument at the court, admirably doing her duty even during surgery and treatment for cancer. Justice Ginsburg even attended oral arguments the day after the death of her husband in 2010. During oral arguments, Justice Ginsburg adopted a thoughtful, exacting style of questioning, designed to get to the heart of the issue. However, her opinions tended to be focused only on ruling on the specific constitutional issues while offering pointed guidance to legislatures to address non-constitutional issues present in a case. Justice Ginsburg took particular interest in cases involving sex discrimination and found herself influencing the law in defeat as well as victory. In fact, many of her most notable opinions are of her poignant dissents, which likens her to her more conservative counterpart and good friend, the late Justice Antonin Scalia. While we can't discuss all of Justice Ginsburg's noteworthy opinions, we'd like to highlight one of her most important. Probably Justice Ginsburg's most famous opinion was the one that she wrote for the seven-member majority in United States vs. Virginia in 1996. In this opinion, Justice Ginsburg and her seven colleagues held that the Constitution requires publicly funded universities to provide equal educational opportunities for men and women. Prior to this opinion, Virginia Military Institute had only accepted men into its academic and military training programs. In order to create a similar opportunity for women, the state created the Virginia Women's Institute for Leadership. However, the court determined that this separate school did not provide an equal opportunity for women, and that VMI and all public universities must accept both men and women into their programs. This decision paved the way for an increasing tide of opinions to make sex equality a reality, instead of merely a promise. The vacancy caused by Justice Ginsburg's death could not have come at a more critical time, as two important dates lie in the near future. Firstly, as the court's terms begin in October, the court could begin its new term in less than a month without a full bench. Owing to the court's slight lean to the right, this might not have much of an impact, but Chief Justice Roberts has voted with the court's left-leaning justices enough that there are some fears that there could be a string of 4-4 decisions, leading to the court's paralysis. However, the more pressing date is November 3rd, Election Day. In 2020, the ballot features the presidency and vice presidency, as well as a third of the seats in the Senate. This is particularly relevant because the Constitution gives the president the power to nominate federal judges, including justices of the Supreme Court, but they also require the consent of the Senate to confirm them to their posts. Currently, Republicans control the White House as well as the Senate, though both are in jeopardy in November. Knowing this, Republican leaders seem intent on confirming a justice to fill the vacant seat on the court and strengthen its conservative ideology before election day. This scenario should sound familiar. In 2016, Justice Scalia died, leaving his seat vacant in a presidential election year. Then-President Barack Obama nominated Judge Merrick Garland to fill the vacancy 
But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, a Republican, refused to permit Judge Garland even a hearing, arguing that the American people should have their say in the new justice, pointing to the elections later that year. Republican presidential candidates seized on this opportunity and made replacing Scalia, a noted conservative, with a similar jurist, a core part of their campaigns. Then-candidate Donald Trump galvanised voters in part along this line of thought, and his victory enabled him to nominate Neil Gorsuch to fill the vacancy, a decision which the Senate, still under the leadership of McConnell, confirmed. Trump has then been able to fill another vacancy during his first term, as Justice Brett Kavanaugh succeeded Justice Anthony Kennedy following the latter's retirement. Although the fight over court vacancies in a presidential year parallel each other, there are two key differences. First, the timeline is drastically different. While Justice Scalia's seat was vacant for most of the year leading up to the election, Justice Ginsburg's seat has only become vacant with under two months left until ballots are cast. This doesn't leave anywhere near as much time for support or opposition to coalesce among voters as it did in 2016, and the Senate will be hard-pressed to set aside enough time to confirm any nominee the President puts forward. Secondly, unlike in 2016, the White House and the Senate have the same party in power, making it easier for a nominee to be confirmed if the aforementioned timing issues can be resolved. However, the tenuous nature of the Republican Senate majority and McConnell's prior conduct may prevent the president from getting a nominee confirmed before election day. The Senate currently consists of 53 Republicans, 45 Democrats and two independents, Bernie Sanders and Angus King, who both caucus with the Democrats. With Republican Vice President Mike Pence holding a tie-breaking vote, four Republicans defecting would be nearly fatal to the President's hopes of a pre-election confirmation. Two defectors have already emerged. Both Lisa Murkowski of Alaska and Susan Collins of Maine have declared that they will not vote to confirm a new justice before Election Day. Three more Republican senators, Cory Gardner of Colorado, Chuck Grasley of Iowa and Mitt Romney of Utah, have not yet taken positions on this issue, but could potentially defect. As to who would replace Justice Ginsburg in the court, the president has said that his nominee will likely be a woman. The most prominent woman on the list of potential nominees that the president released is Judge Amy Coney Barrett, a former clerk for Justice Scalia and a member of the Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. As President Trump appointed Judge Barrett to the Seventh Circuit, the sitting senators know her from her recent confirmation hearings, which could enable her to sail through the confirmation process once again, owing to the familiarity of the senators and her lack of opportunity to author any controversial decisions in her short time on the Seventh Circuit. Should the President be able to confirm a nominee to fill the current vacancy, the court would shift right with a 6-3 conservative-leaning majority. However, the court makeup will be a prominent issue during the presidential campaign, even beyond this one seat. If the president can get a nominee confirmed, then he will be the first president since Ronald Reagan to have three picks for the Supreme Court confirmed. And should the president win a second term, it's reasonably possible that he could appoint up to three more justices. Senior Associate Justice Clarence Thomas is 72 years old and has been on the court since 1991. Justice Stephen Breyer is 82 and has held his seat since 1994, and Justice Samuel Alito is 70 and has held his seat since 2006. Should all three leave the court in the next four years and be replaced by Trump appointees, the court would have a 7-2 conservative-leaning majority for some decades to come. If the former Vice President Joe Biden wins, it's possible, but unlikely, that the court could have a 6-3 liberal-leaning majority by 2024. More than anything else, the makeup of the court and the power it possesses could be a defining issue in a second consecutive election cycle. What do you think? Should the Senate move forward with the confirmation of a Trump nominee? Should Trump even nominate someone so close to the election? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and come and discuss this and other Supreme Court news in our Discord server. There's a link to that in the description. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers, who make videos like this one possible. 
And if you want to see your name at the end of the videos, like Callum Johnson, Hamad al and Brian Ferris, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.